During their training, divers are taught that while the diver is locked out, they must not take time off to relax and neglect their responsibilities. Although there may be long periods of inactivity, they must keep on the lookout for any unusual occurrence. By keeping alert, a bellman may well be able to anticipate and so prevent a hazardous situation developing. If he can see the diver at work, he should observe him, although this will not often be possible. In the bell. No. We've lost comms with the diver. Can you see him? Stand by. Negative surface. I cannot see diver. OK, give him one pull on his umbilical. Roger. In this emergency exercise, Oral communication has ceased with the diver. The exercise simulates the problems of a diver with a trapped umbilical. Different companies may have slightly different criteria for deploying the bellman, but it will always be the supervisor's final decision. OK, you can lock out and investigate. The bellman must stay calm and keep thinking. Although speed is essential, if the correct procedures are not carried out, he may become a casualty himself. Flooding the bell, both valves open, Roger. Looking up, bellman's on binnacle, hot water, air, everything OK. Understood. Putting my hat on. Having switched to the onboard gas supply, he puts on his helmet and checks communications with the supervisor. I'll read you loud and clear. Roger, leaving the bell. To make re-entry for himself and the recovered diver easier, he partly floods the bell. Leaving the bell. The bellman follows the diver's umbilical, reporting to the supervisor as he goes. The supervisor needs all the information that he can get in order to advise and help the bellman. You're freeing the umbilical, Roger. Diver's umbilical free. Diver's umbilical free. Once he reaches the stricken diver, the first priority is to ensure the gas supply. Brain damage can occur within minutes of losing gas. First, the bellman opens the free flow valve. If gas does not flow, he closes this valve and opens the one to the bailout bottle. If there is still insufficient gas, he can use the pneumo tube, inserting it into the helmet and asking the surface to put gas onto it. Once gas has been restored, the bellman pulls the casualty and himself back on his own umbilical, ensuring they are not fouled on the way. Diver's got gas. I'm taking him back to the bell now. Diver's got gas. You're taking him back to the bell. Roger. The precise course of action will depend upon the circumstances, and the bellman and the supervisor are likely to have to make some very quick decisions. Diver's hooked up. Bellman going into the bell. Going in the bell. Roger. The more the supervisor knows, the more he will be able to help the bellman, and the information from a remotely operated vehicle can be very helpful. The stricken diver must be recovered into the bell as quickly as possible. This will generally mean using the mechanical lifting device. Bellman's in the bell on bell atmosphere, Roger. To speed up the operation, any equipment can be just dropped to be recovered later. In training, it is important to concentrate on correct procedure rather than speed, which will develop with practice. Divers in the bell, Roger. Take me the helmet off. The diver is on bell atmosphere. Diver's on belt atmosphere. Roger, is he breathing? Negative, the diver is not breathing. Clear the airway and extend the deck. Airway is clear. Once inside the bell, the priority is to restore breathing. First, the airways must be cleared. Then, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation must be started. The water level can be lowered at a suitable time. It's not easy to perform these techniques, and it may be necessary to recover the diver completely into the bell. Roger, he's got a pulse. OK, continue mouth to mouth until he regains consciousness. 
Once the casualty is breathing adequately, his other injuries, if any, can be assessed. In a real emergency, the bellman will need to think and act rapidly, making decisions based on his knowledge of diving medicine techniques. Good training and quick but calm thinking will count for a lot. No one can be certain how they will cope with an incident until it happens to them.